Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. I wanted to share with you some more little file folder journals that I've been creating. And also to let you know that over at Your Paper Pantry, we are going to be starting a new group, a new swap. And what do you think it is? Little file folder journals. So I'm really excited. Um, these are super easy and fun to make. I'm really having a good time with them. And um, my inspiration is just um, um, overflowing. <laughs> So I started making these for a craft boutique. I'm going to actually a few craft boutiques I'm participating in from now till the end of May. And I had some of these file folders um, in my stash. They're four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I had them in my stash and I was going through, you know, making some other stuff and I came across these and I'm like, you know what? They would be absolutely perfect for a little mini journal. Um, just something maybe you can use as like an, one particular event, you know, not a whole like for a whole year because obviously they're not really big but you can say like oh I'm gonna journal about my little vacation or you know just and you can, obviously you can use them for anything but my thought would be it'd be great if you had a whole little collection of these I'm gonna show you right now and you found a nice little box or something for them to go in and look at like you have your own little file system with you know particular events we'll call it project file folder <laughs> So anyhow, I thought that would be great. Like the boys just went on um, the, their field trip. I went with them and it would be great like to make one little one and then put some of the pictures in there and then just have them journal about it. So anyhow, that was my like thought when I started making them. Uh, these are the two newest ones I've made. I sketched this girl out and then what I do is, okay, I'll give you the naked sketch. Okay, this is a different sketch, but I'm going to show you what I do. Okay, this is this girl is going to go on a cover of a book, but I sketch her out, okay, and then I trace them. This is a different one. I trace them, like I put, you know, the tracing paper over the sketch, and then I trace her out, and then I transfer her over to, um, like, cardstock or something, like for the, you know, skin, like the skin color, and then I cut them out, and then um, I paper piece them, you know, like I cut out a pattern for the hair, and then cut that out of something. That's what I did with her. I um, cut her whole head out, and then I went back and made a pattern of just her hair, and then um, cut it out of cardstock, and then I glued the pages of a book on on there, and then like trimmed all the way the trimmed off all the excess. I'm sorry if I'm getting you confused. Um, and then inked around the edges, and then outlined it with black, and then I just used a sharpie. Made her eyebrows, and then you know, like embellished. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I did for this one. These are um, rub-ons that I've had a really long time, and I decided I'm not going to hoard anything, so I used them up. So, oops, treasure every moment. I'm super excited. I'm using my new uh, tripod that for my iPhone that I got on eBay, so I won't make you woozy anymore. Hopefully. Okay, so that's how I did that one, and then this one, there they've all been scraps. This was left over from another book I was making. Uh, this is a really cute stamp I got from Joann's. It's uh, one of the Studio 112, and it says Journal of Peculiar Events. So you can see it right here. There's a little empty spot you can put, you know, your name, Yolanda's Journal of Peculiar Events, or 2013 Journal of Peculiar Events. You know, I love that stamp. So, and I just used up scraps, made a little banner piece out of the little flower, one of my little birds, and then scalloped this, and so that was it. Now, um, I think I said these file folders measure four and a quarter by six and a quarter, and what I did the other night, I created six of them, okay, and I just did them all the same so that I could, like I laid all the papers out, and um, there's eight sheets in here, and I think I can actually go with ten. I don't know why I just did eight, but it made it so quick and easy just to do them. Like you didn't have to overly embellish, you know, you want to leave a lot of room for writing and adding pictures or tucking in memorabilia and all that stuff. So it turns, it's turning out to be a really great project for my craft fair. So, okay, I'll show you what I put in here. So, um, I put the first layer is just a, um, cream or a natural white Nina cardstock. And then I um, s stitched in a mail, air mail envelope that I like cut down a little bit and then punched out a circle so you can 
have a little notch to, you know, tuck something in. And then I cut this one longer and made a flap. So that's that side, and I scalloped the edges. And then I did two sheets of writing paper. Okay, just two plain sheets of writing paper. And then a craft color paper with a time card that I turned into a tag. And on the other side, I did a security um, envelope. I cut it open on the side and flipped it back on itself so that the blue side showed. And then I stitched it on my machine in here and then just added like a little die cut. This was a can company. So you can tuck something in here, maybe this is a little pocket, okay. And then the next layer is just a white Nina cardstock with the mail envelope. And then two more sheets of writing paper with just a little tag folded over with an index card and stitched across the top. And then two more sheets of plain writing paper, or one more sheet of plain writing paper. Oops, sorry about that. Yeah, one more sheet. And then some ledger paper. So that's what I did for all of them. And it was super easy because then I was just able to crank them all out. And then, okay. So these, I did that stitch where you poke the holes. And if you make them, okay, let me see. So the file folder itself is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. I cut the inside pages to um, four by six. Well, obviously eight by six, so that way they fold in half and they're four, but they're um, four, you know, right here is a six inch um, high. So what I did is I put my ruler down and I measured just the inside pages. I'm not taking into account the folder. So I just laid my ruler up against the uh, crease of the page of the pages and that's six inch and so I poked a hole with um, oh there's that little tool I had someone ask me I think it was Lisa about crop using your crop a dial or I use it's a really sharp and where is it oh here it is this is what I use oh no that was a needle dang it dang it dang it okay I'm looking I'm looking Here it is. Sorry, sorry. Okay, I use this tool. I've had it a really long time. I guess it's like an awl. Um, I don't know where I got it from because it's been around forever, but it would be the same thing like an awl. A A A W L. Um, and I just poke through. So I held my ruler like this, and then I just went through all the layers. And I did it at three inch, four. Well, okay, obviously. Started in the started in the middle. Um, and poke my hole at three inch and then four or five and then one and two so I have five holes and then I did that stitch um, using my you know where you go in through the middle out I um, followed the tutorial from Marianne Kensington so I use on these I use the wax linen thread it's really strong but you can use embroidery floss you, just whatever is strong, you know, and that's all I did, and they came together so quickly. Okay, so I wanted to try sewing them on my machine, actually stitching in the signatures, and I it worked out great. I used a number 14 needle, a number 14, just a regular point needle. Now, I have a Kenmore machine that I use for my paper. I used to use it for sewing, but I don't anymore because I have a Bernina, but I wouldn't sew paper on my Bernina that's for fabric only which I don't think it'd be a problem but I don't want to take the chance but I had an old Kenmore so that's what I use down in my paper crafting so I use a number 14 needle and I use upholstery thread which they have I just use the Coates and Clark they have it in the section with all the threads and I just use that one because um, I wanted it to be really strong and I wanted the bigger needle because if you use a really small needle, it's going to have a lot of tension and opening and closing. If the holes are real small, I just think it might tear. So I just use a number 14 and the upholstery thread because, like I said, it's really strong it's a, and it's thicker than your average thread. That way it poked bigger holes and gives it more, to me, more leeway to, you know, open and close and, I don't know, maybe hold up to more uh, wear and tear. And... 
think we can see that. Sorry about the shadows, but it came out perfect and it stitched through the eight pages perfectly. Um, next time I might add one or two more pages just to try. I don't think I do more than 10, but you can do that. So you can sew them in there too. So anyhow, I just wanted to share with you and I hope you like them. And if you're on your paper pantry, check out our new swap. And if you're not on your paper pantry, take a peek at us. Um, they have, we have a ton of great swaps, really fun stuff and all kinds of different projects, not just paper related. So, um, I hope you have a great Sunday and I am off to finish my potato salad and pasta salad for Desi's fifth birthday party today. And um, I hope you all have a great day and I look forward to um, more videos this week. Thanks for watching. Bye.